we're going to move to the equipment screen. Please note that all of the line items on the equipment screen are necessary in order to calculate the most precise prediction possible. We eliminated all variables that did not affect the uh, prediction capability of the software. So we'll go and enter a gun profile. As we enter the profile, it is important to put what combination or system components you are utilizing. So in this case, I will be utilizing a SRS 338 Lapua Magnum with a 26 inch barrel and a DTSS silencer attached as well as a DTM 300 grain uh, ammo. So if I changed any of these components then I would want to create a separate gun profile. Say I uh, decided to have a profile with and without a silencer, I would want to create a separate profile for each. Next, I will enter the bullet information. It's a, a 300 grain projectile. The bullet length is uh, 1.8 inches. The bullet diameter is 0.338 inches and it's the bullet velocity is uh, 2691. Those, uh, that bullet information that I entered is what is utilized to generate a spin drift calculator, sorry, a, a stability factor calculation over here in settings in the what's on tab. So what's really nice about our program, because we uh, have the capability to enter all of the factors in calculating stability, then it automatically calculates stability as the uh, environmental conditions change. All other programs that allow you to uh, have a stability factor will let you input or manually input a uh, stability factor value but that value does not change as the environmental conditions change, which it should change uh, as environmentals change. And this program uh, allows you to accurately have stability factor calculations at any uh, location or environmental condition automatically. <clears throat> so we'll move down to the drag coefficient. Uh, the drag coefficient, we will explain um, how to utilize that, but uh, that defaults at 0.5 and we suggest that you uh, leave it at 0.5 um, unless your uh, curve needs very slight tweaking. Then you can adjust it up to uh, 0.6 or down to 0.4, but if you need to go beyond that, really you uh, have a ballistic coefficient value that is uh, inaccurate. So we will provide a, another video explaining drag coefficient in more detail. <clears throat> the sight height of our SRS rifle is 2.63 inches and that's measured from the center of the barrel to the center of the scope. The click value on the Collis optic that I am utilizing has uh, 0 0.101 uh, MRAD clicks. So it's uh, advertised as a 0.1 MRAD, but we found in our tests that it ended up uh, tru truly being 0.101. <clears throat> so we could also, if we had an MOA scope, we could toggle to MOA and put a MOA click value in there. <clears throat> the uh, Twist rate of the SRS 338 barrel is a 1 in 10. And the zero range that I 
prefer to zero at is 100 yards because that avoids uh, environmental effects on the bullet placement as well as uh, minimizes any uh, deviation from wind drift. <clears throat> Uh, the next part is the uh, density altitude or environmental conditions that were existing at the time that you zeroed the rifle. So when I zeroed my rifle, it was at uh, a density altitude of 7,800 feet. And if I don't have a way to get a density altitude reading, I can click on the density altitude uh, name that's in blue and it will allow me to enter individual components of that will automatically calculate the density altitude. So we have uh, the pressure, humidity, and air temperature as well as the altitude. Now if you note at the bottom that uh, the station pressure is the actual pressure at the position that you're firing from. And the barometric pressure below that is the pressure that has been adjusted to be equivalent pressure at sea level. So if you have the barometric pressure option selected, you note that the altitude field now allows me to enter a altitude reading. However, if the, I have a Kestrel wind meter or uh, the equivalent, then I can get a station pressure at the location and I would no longer need to enter a altitude and that field becomes uh, disabled. <clears throat> As I go back, we see that the density altitude has uh, automatically uh, adjusted to the calculated value from the subscreen. So I will go ahead and change that back to 7,800 feet. The zero setting allows you to track uh, any kind of, or whatever the turret position is for that zero. So say I have another profile with the same setup that is unsuppressed, and I have zeroed my turrets um, for that profile with no suppressor. But with this profile, when I install a silencer, I find that my my group or my, my uh, zero has now dropped uh, one mil. Well, I can go ahead and enter one mil of correction in the zero setting. And let's say that it also had it also impacts 0.2 mils to the right, and I can move it uh, 0.2 to the left by doing a negative 0.2 mils. And you can see that, that the zero setting for this profile with the suppressor is now, uh, the reading on the dial is 1 up and 0.2 left. <clears throat> and if I go to the ballistic screen and I enter a 100 yard distance, you can see at the top that it again has a 1 mil up and 0.2 mils left for that 100 yard zero. Moving back to the equipment screen, we can quickly verify all the information that we entered is correct and looks good, and it is, so we will save this profile. So we can say, you can see I have uh, numerous profiles that have similar um, information, and I can change this name at this point or, or replace one of the other profiles, but I'm going to just call this uh, uh, test2. Actually, I'll just replace, you know, test two. So we'll just do done and save that. <clears throat> that can, and I can go ahead and uh, load any of the other profiles that I would like to see. I have here a 308 Winchester load, and I can load that and change to my other profile. Looks like uh, it's. It needs its data updated still. <clears throat> that concludes the equipment screen. We will move on to the ballistic screen next. <clears throat>